Why? Uh, we're going to make this short and sweet about why this sucks. So, starting off, uh, cool, Adam Warlock's a character. Just in case anyone was questioning what's going on, yeah, he looks great. Excellent. Uh, most legendaries look great. Most legendaries we actually find out more about after we, uh, you know, see their team. With Jubilee, we knew everybody basically... Uh, who was on that team before uh, and then we found out her entire kit the same day we found out Bishop's kit so we kind of knew everything we speculate Nebula and Gamora's reworks are happening they've mentioned it we speculate other characters like Philavel and uh, Moon Dragon are coming out great but we have a legendary without a team here sure let's take the guess and assume this new legendary is the greatest thing in the world because why wouldn't it be you can get them, you can get them. X-Factor and Jubilee unlock? Cool. That's what I always look for in an unlock. I like it to be a team of four characters and then a completely other team's legendary to unlock the characters. Uh, took me by surprise. I assumed that whenever the X-Factor was utilized for a legendary, uh, it would be with their own legendary, not borrowing a better team's version, but so be it. And even then... I don't necessarily think this is the worst thing I've seen in this blog. Again, Adam Warlock has a kit. He's great. We're not wasting our time. Legendary characters are good. This isn't news. What I want to look at is gear tier requirements. ISO class requirements. Because this is a problem. Not whatever. Not so recommendations are hey it's gonna be a tough fight you should probably do your best imagine if you will unlocking jubilee dr octopus phoenix with a character that had to be gear tier 12 13 14 with isos imagine you had to unlock doc ock with a gear tier 12 domino hell imagine you had to unlock Jubilee with a gear tier 12 wasp. These are not characters that you truly have to use in these fights. That's how it's been going on forever. They make it a little bit difficult to get the characters, but getting the characters to five, six, seven star is the major point of the challenge. Then you can figure out what investment the characters need outside. You can hedge, you can save some resources. Requiring an investment any investment shy of the star restriction is ridiculous. I don't care if there's a precedent for it. It's ridiculous. It's ridiculous that I have to gear tier 14 ISO class 5 Polaris. And all this sets up is a future of doing this over and over again. Making legendary unlocks less about getting the character which is one facet of how you spend your energy, resources, and time in the game. But now, it's about everything. Now it's about, well, you have to invest in this team in order to get the smallest part of another team that, once again, we don't know about. This video is going to age like milk. We're going to see the rest of the Infinity Watch. They're going to be Black Order 2.0. Everyone's going to be crazy. Except it's still going to take a Gear Tier 14 version of a team to unlock them. Now, we can only hope this is a mistype, which is pretty par for the course for them, and it's not a rope -a dope where they're gonna say, oh ho ho, sorry guys, we uh we were joking about that. Those are requirements. We're gonna hope that's not the case. Because now we have something way worse. Now we have a requirement for Doom Raids. Now, for those who aren't doing Doom Raids, you guys are going to talk a lot about how you should have those characters at ISO 4 and 5. And let me tell you, as somebody probably better than you and in communications with people in the top 10, 15 alliances in the game, people who are in the top 50 plus TCPs in the game, these players do not have tier 4 ISOs on every character, let alone every character they use for Doom Raid currently. There are going to be players who are 30, 60%ing Doom Raids today. 
that cannot do the same regardless of the difficulty swap they make because now you are required to have ISO class level 4 and class level 5. This is stupid. This is so stupid. Requirements are stupid. Let me get my ass kicked and then have to invest more into the characters. There's no guarantee that ISO level 4 and ISO level 5 characters, well, you're done now, click auto. Because if you think that's the guarantee, have you tried the entire Pimtech in Dark Dimension 4? They don't work well. That's not what they do. They're selling you on an idea that this is this difficult. You can't create and test. You can't have B teams anymore. If you make a mistake, you can't look at the rest of your roster without having this level of investment. And before anyone decides to bring up, well, they said they're gonna work on the economy. Think back about how many times they've reworked the economy. How many times has it ever not sucked? If the answer is, I don't know, shut your mouth. And if the answer is ever, you're wrong. They have never once reworked the economy of anything that didn't make it suck. It just sucked less or sucked in a new and exciting way that we didn't realize for weeks. Blitz changes sucked for everybody. RTA changes suck for everybody. Battle pass releases suck for everybody. This is not good. Requirements to enter are not the same as rewarding you for investing in characters. I have a 380k Astonishing X-Men team that I can use to auto U7.5, mostly, or progress one and a half to two nodes in Doom Raid right now. None of those characters, not Jubilee, not Bishop, not Beast, have ISO 4 on them. And they're still meaningful enough to accomplish those tasks. And yeah, I do need to get them stronger to do better. But I get to choose how I get my character stronger. I have the option of putting ISOs, putting gear, getting more stars, whatever it takes me as a player. Spender, free to play, it doesn't matter. Once you take away that option into a requirement, it ruins everything. Dark Dimension, little bit smaller, requires more things, fine. It's an exclusive event, the rewards are reasonable, I get it. It's also a one-time event, so you can either choose to beat the event or take a little bit more time, work on characters that are good overall, and then take a little bit more time in the event itself and still get the rewards. You get the choice. Once you do this, you take away the choice. And that's the problem. So. Everybody who wants to talk about how awesome Adam Warlock is, congratulations, you're tone deaf. Everybody who wants to realize that there is a problem brewing and we're gonna see it for a while now, gear tier 12, ISO class three, gear tier requirements for legendary unlocks, working on a secondary team, more specifically Polaris and Multiple Man as Red's, you know, but Shatterstar and Longshot on their own are pretty good. It just evens out. So, sorry. Sorry for the rant. Pretty sure everyone else is pissing about this and moaning about this. I haven't even discussed MSF API, the only thing that might not suck in this entire post. But hey, at least you can farm yo-yo so you don't have to farm Quake in the arena store when you unlock Black Bull or Maw. And, uh, you know, hey, maybe you can get that old uh, anti-venom uh, from a Blitz whenever it comes out, even though he's going to be quite literally harder to get. Although I do remember Jason Bender saying he wanted catch-ups to be easier for free-to-play and new players. I feel like adding all the symbiotes to orbs and calling them the orbiates is not the way to do that. Anyway, guys, thanks for watching. Uh, comment below and tell me I was wrong or anything else. I don't really care anymore. I'm done. Peace.